Apollo 16 left the pad here at Cape Kennedy 19 and a half minutes ago and is now safely up there, parked going around the Earth. When it left here, when it lifted off the pad, it became the, it came under the control of the Manned Spacecraft Center at Houston. And Jim Hartz is there. Jim? Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Uh, we were just listening in the circuit here for a second. There was a minor little problem. Uh, they could see on their consoles here on the ground what was called a possible blockage in a primary coolant loop. They didn't say much more than that. And so we assumed that perhaps it was one of the coolant loops in the suits. However, there are several uh, systems on board the spacecraft which are used to keep it cool. And they asked uh, John Young to uh, check a, a switch or a dial in the spacecraft. He did, and just about 30 seconds ago, they said, whatever you did, uh, that, that corrected the problem. So they are uh, well on their way, and uh, this next hour and a half is spent mainly in checking the uh, spacecraft systems. It goes through tremendous stresses at launch, and they want to make sure everything is uh, in uh, first great shape before they fire up the engine again and go on toward the moon. So it does require a great deal of uh, checks on board the spacecraft and checks from the ground, and uh, that, that, again, takes a little over an hour, and by 3.30 this afternoon, they should have all that in shape, and if everything is in shape, uh, they will go on. Now back to Gary Cutley in New York. At about 4 o'clock this afternoon, Eastern Time, after the Apollo 16 spacecraft has left the Earth's orbit and has started its journey to the moon, there will be a very important maneuver. It's called transposition and docking. It's happened in all of the moon flights, and it's important because it has to be successful if the astronauts are to land on the moon's surface. And Here's how it works briefly with our little little toy here. This is the Apollo spacecraft as it is now and as it will be up to transposition and docking. The third stage rocket, this shield housing the lunar module and the command surface module here with the three-man crew up in front. Then they will separate like this, and they will turn around for the docking maneuver. I'll take this protective shield off so you can see the lunar module there. The crew will then, when they're using their own small rockets, will guide their vehicle back towards the lunar module, aiming for a small opening here, which they have to couple into. Of course, both vehicles will be going at a fantastic speed in space, but that is of no importance because they're both moving at the same speed. But it is a very difficult and delicate maneuver. On the last moon mission, they had to hit it rather hard to get this locking action. Once it is locked in, they will pull the lunar module, this spidery-looking piece of machinery, out of the third-stage rocket. The third-stage rocket will then have finished its mission. It will be jettisoned. It will be put on a trajectory towards the moon where it will land on the surface to create seismic waves, which various instruments there will measure. And this is the Apollo 16 spacecraft, which will fly to the moon. The crew here, the service module here, this, the lunar module, which will separate, and the crew will land. And that's how they'll go to the moon. It's a very important maneuver, and we hope to have, expect to have, live television pictures from the Apollo 16 spacecraft of this event. That'll be later this afternoon, about 4 o'clock Eastern Time. Now let's go back to John Chancellor at the Cape. I think we can hear some conversation now, but we're going to lose it in just a minute. We've had conversation between the spacecraft and Houston. John Young said again, he said, the view is just fantastic from up there. They are, are, have passed over the Canary Islands, and I guess they're out of touch now, and they, they, we've had a loss of signal, which is to be expected. And uh, they will be picked up by other stations as they go around. And on the second revolution, they're going to make two revolutions of the Earth this afternoon before they head for the moon, and they'll do that over Australia. So that's where they are now. Let's see, if they've gone from the Canary Islands, they're probably over Africa at this moment, going about uh, 14,000 miles an hour. They, uh, and that is where we stand now in a, in a mission that has just uh, gone, as far as we can tell, perfectly. Uh, when they do get to the moon, here's the schedule for that. They now are in the air around the Earth. They're due to arrive on the moon on Wednesday. They are due to land on the moon Thursday afternoon, and they will have that day, next Thursday, the first of their drives around the lunar surface. They will have the second of their drives on Friday, and on Saturday they will have the third. 
Now, in those three days, they will travel about 25 miles in all on the surface of the moon. Then, next Sunday afternoon, they will leave the moon for the Earth, and they will go into orbit around the moon, and on Tuesday, they will leave the moon's gravitational pull and head for the Earth. On Wednesday, their Ken Mattingly, Lieutenant Commander Thomas K. Mattingly II, the command module pilot, will get out and walk in space. That will be on Wednesday afternoon. And then splashdown in the Pacific is for the 28th of April, a Friday. And that will be 12 days in all, about as long as Apollo 15. Uh, they will go about 25 miles. Apollo 15 traveled 28 miles. Uh, they will have 21 hours out of the space capsule on the surface of the moon. The Apollo 15 astronauts had only 18 and a half hours. They will be on the surface of the moon for 73 hours. I think that's a record. Apollo 15 went only 67 hours. They are landing in a place called Cayley Plains in the Descartes Highlands on the moon, and they hope to pick up 195 pounds of rock samples. Now here's Roy Neal at Houston. Hundreds of visitors showed up today here at the Modern Spacecraft Center in Houston, and many of them are visiting the Space Museum right now. They watched the launch by television in a big auditorium in the same building, and now they're looking at exhibits. Over a million people tour this center every year, and among the things they see are an actual command module that flew on Apollo 9. There's also a lunar landscape complete with a real space suit once used by astronaut Alan Bean, and replicas of all the tools that the astronauts will use on the surface of the moon. In contrast with the crowds at the Cape, 1,500 miles away, the visitors here today took the launch more calmly. But they are excited by the things they've seen, and most of them say they do plan to follow the flight on television. John? Thank you, Roy. Lots of people here, too. We're going to have quite a large traffic jam as they all start to go back to have Sunday dinner, having seen one of the more spectacular shows of the year. Uh, talking again about what they're going to be doing on the moon, these astronauts, when they land on the moon, will be landing at a higher altitude than any other astronauts have ever done. Uh, Charles Duke, who has surveyed the territory there, says it will be like landing in a valley at the top of a mountain. They're going to be about 7,400 feet higher in terms of the moon surface than uh, Tranquility Base, where Neil Armstrong became the first American or first man to walk on the moon. They're going to be landing several hundred miles to the north and to the west of Hadley Rill, where Apollo 15 landed, and about which we now, all of us, know quite a lot. So it's the first landing in the lunar highlands and the highest territory ever survived, ever surveyed. The men are on a new diet. They found that the Apollo 15 astronauts developed a regular breathing, a regular beating of the heart. The rhythms of the heart were disturbed by the moon, and that is called arith arrhythmia, I believe, or I'm not sure how you pronounce it. What it means is that the heart beats in an irregular way, and when they looked into this, they found that the gravity on the moon is so light that they were losing potassium ions. Uh, the gravity has something to do with that, and I'm not quite sure what that is, but they are now on a potassium-rich diet, and presumably that irregularity won't happen again. We'll be back with more of our coverage of Apollo 16 after this word from Gulf.